To get started, first download Blender. Make sure it's version 4 or above. After you install it and open it the first time, you should see a scene like this. Come up to Edit, Preferences. Ensure you're in the Add-ons tab. Click this drop-down. Click Install from Disk. Now find the zipped up file you downloaded and click Install. Then lastly, make sure this checkbox is enabled. And so it stays enabled the next time you open Blender. Come here to the bottom left and click Save Preferences. In your Blender scene, delete all existing objects. Click A to select everything. Delete. Next, open the right side menu. You can either click this little arrow or press the N key. Come down to the Basify tab and click New Dynamic Relief. You can change the dimensions under Relief Settings. Change the maximum height and also the density. But you won't be able to see that yet. For the dynamic relief, you can change these settings at any time. You can also update how the dimensions are displayed under graphic settings. Now to create the scene, first I'm going to add some depth maps. Under the relief controllers menu, make sure depth maps is selected, then click import. Select an image, click import. It'll be added to your scene. Now let's make the resolution a little better. I'll bump it up for two steps by now. Click on the image to select it. You can move it around with the G key, scale it with S, and rotate with R. You can also reposition, resize, and rotate along a specific axis by typing X, Y, or Z I'm gonna move this guy to the corner and update the maximum size of the relief. Let's say two inches. Next I'm going to add another depth map. Alright, that looks good. You can select depth maps either by clicking them in the 3D viewport. Here on the right side, in this uh, scene collection, or in the Basify menu right here. When something is selected, you can change its strength, give it a bias to move it up or down, or disable it entirely. Next, let's add some 3D models. First, I'll add a native model from Blender. Type Shift A, Mesh, and let's do the monkey. Next, I will import a model. Come to File, Import. I'll use the OBJ format. It's a bit big, so we'll scale it with the S key, rotate it along the Z axis, 180 degrees, Let's manually reposition it, scale it a little more, and that's perfect. Next I want to parent this object to the monkey, 
So when I move and rotate and scale the monkey, this goes along with it. So first select the glasses and then the parent, type control P and then select object. Now when you just select the monkey, everything will rotate as you expect. Next, with the monkey selected, click on Create from Mesh under the Meshes menu. For now, I'm going to do Original Selections. And the mesh is now affecting the dynamic relief. Again, you can scale it along certain axes as well. You can either rotate the entire parent lattice or just the objects inside of it with this mesh rotation menu. You can also skew the meshes. Here's what that looks like underneath. For now I'm going to set these skews to zero. And I think I'm going to scale this up shrink it along the z-axis scale it down a little bit and move it over here and from the same menu I can continue to adjust the mesh rotation now that I'm happy with my rough draft I'm going to increase the resolution again I think 300,000 polygons is pretty good but let's bump it up one more 500,000. And one more step I want to do is I want to make this uh, monkey smoother. So with this mesh selected, come to the right tab, to the modifiers menu, and let's add a new subdivision surface modifier. I'm going to make this two levels, and now we have a much smoother mesh. Come click the make sculpt relief button, click OK. Keep in mind that if you make further changes to the dynamic relief, the sculpt relief won't be affected. So with this selected, I'm going to begin sculpt mode settings. For now, let's start with the stamping tools. I'm going to grab some hair models and just click and drag. Let's give this guy a little goatee. You can change the size of the brush with the F key. You can also change its strength with Shift F. So let's make it a very subtle effect. All right, that's what I like to see. And let's give him a little mustache here. Maybe make it a little stronger. I'm going to choose some other hairs. And maybe give this guy a little toupee. With version 1.1, there are three types of hair you can choose. You also have sculpting tools in addition to the out-of-the-box sculpting brushes that Blender comes with. I am going to select XY move and let's make this chin stretch out a little further. I'm going to increase the size of my effect area and just bring this down. Next let's move something on the Z axis. I want to move this arm down a little bit. Alright, but now you've noticed that I've uh, moved the bottom a little too far. So I'm going to come to Sculpt Settings and click Reset and Negative Z Vertices. Alright, that's more like it. And then for Enhanced Detail, I want to make this beard a little more well-defined. So I am going to just run my mouse over it after clicking a few times and you can notice if I bump up the strength, how details get extenuated. I found a uh, good place to do this is usually eyes and hands. Alright, next I want to 
get rid of some of these cliffs. First, activate face sets. If the left menu is invisible, you can grab this small arrow and drag it out to start reducing these cliffs. First, find the pinch brush. Move your mouse inside the face set you want to move. Hold control. Start dragging. Move outside of the face set. And then just start moving your mouse back and forth along the edge. If you move far away, the effect is lessened. And if you're up close, it becomes more aggressive. I'm going to change the size of the effect. And do the same thing on this side. And just keep doing that until I'm happy. If I shrink the effect, I can get a harder curve. Then I'll disable face sets and I can either grab the native smooth brush or the soft smooth one inside the Bassify menu and just refine these even further. And even though this looks like shit, let's call it done. Come back to object mode, go to the post-processing panel and export.